Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick little talk about maximizing your gut health because this is so, so common that people are struggling with and it causes a lot of problems. So you've got this, it's my little punny joke here, but seriously, you do. All of these things are things that you can do and you can start to implement today. Again, you don't have to do this overnight. There's no fast tracking anything. We do need to do these simple things in order to get your body to work with you instead of against you. So that being said, you are not what you eat. You are what you digest, what you absorb and what you assimilate. Okay. If your gut is not happy, your body will not be happy either. I said what I said, there's nothing that you can do about it. But if you want to be your best, you need to make your gut health a priority. So why focus on the gut? Um, your gut helps you optimize your digestion and your nutrient absorption. It enhances your athletic performance and your metabolic efficiency. It prevents, you know, intestinal permeability, overgrowth, pathogens. Um, It supports healthy hormones. So your thyroid specifically, hello to your thyroid. That is a huge thing for weight loss, dealing with weight loss. Helps you reduce your inflammation and modulate the immune system. And it enhances your overall quality of life. So if you can have like those physical changes in your body, you're going to see your hard work pay off a lot better. So what is a healthy gut? Basically, you know, if you have a healthy gut, if you're able to digest your food without pain, gas, or excessive bloating, when you can absorb and utilize all the different foods that you eat and your intestinal lining, your bacterial composition, your digestive capacity, gut motility, gut vagal tone, all of that. So like a healthier gut equals healthier you. So what are some signs of a healthy gut? So One is a normal bowel movement. So what is a normal bowel movement? You want to think about, I know it sounds so silly, but I literally talk about poop all day, every day, but you want to have a bowel movement every single day. It's going to be brown. It's going to be about the size of like your thumb to your finger. That's how big it should be. It shouldn't float. It should be brown. Like it should be one full regular poop. Okay. Um, you can look up photos if you'd like to see, I didn't put one in here to spare your eyes, (laughs) but that is literally what it should look like when you have optimized sleep, energy, training, performance, and recovery. Your gut is really good. When you have a healthy mindset and a psychological well being, your hair is good, your skin, your nails, your hormones are on point. You don't have any nausea, any reflux, any heartburn or bad gas, good cognition, healthy libido. All of those are signs of a healthy gut. So what is normal bloating? Bloating is normal um, to an extent. After you eat, like you first wake up in the morning, you're going to have the most flat tummy ever. But after you eat a little bit, you should have a little bit of dissension here in your gut. And that is completely normal. But again, if it's like you look like you're pregnant all of a sudden, or it grows like a crazy amount and you're in pain, that's not normal bloating. So there's a lot of different diseases that are linked to your gut issue. So like IBD, IBS, diabetes, PCOS, infertility, sex hormone imbalances, hypothyroidism, skin conditions, brain fog, fatigue, anxiety, depression, ADHD, OCD, UTIs, cancer, like all of those different things, those are typically stemming from gut issues. So if you're dealing with any of those or you have any of those, the gut is a really good place to start. So top causes of gut issues um, in athletes or people who come to me like wanting to shape their physique, um, one would be stress, internal and external stress. Stressors are huge. Your diet, obviously, we got to talk about that. Your hormones, toxins, antibiotic use, medications, birth control is huge, laxative, antiacids, antidepressants, all of those. But most of the time, again, I see lack of food diversity, overtraining or overdoing it with the hit classes, the group classes, those types of things. Um, chronic stress, or if you're like a bodybuilder, you can get a lot of time from prep and the different foods that you eat with that. So biggest issues that I'm seeing is leaky gut, lack of digestive capacity, overgrowths and pathogens. So SIBO, H. pylori, candida, parasites, or just overall your diet. So the goal is to prevent your gut issues so that you don't have to fix them because a lot of time people don't even think about their gut until they're having these issues. But you won't have to fix them (laughs) if you can fix the cause, right? So why did we even have these gut issues in the first place? So what is leaky gut? So leaky gut refers to increased intestinal permeability. So that means your food particles and your pathogens that can pass into your bloodstream. So no, this is not a disease, like not a disease, and it's not like a medically recognized issue. However, 
Leaky gut doesn't just stay in the gut, okay? So there is a whole bunch of different things that it affects. So like from your diet, your stress, infections, dysbiosis, alcohol, inflammation, um, if you have low stomach acid, you have environmental toxins, if you have new, uh, nutritional insufficiencies, medication, malabsorption, all of those different types of things. So tips to improve your digestive health would be you want to include a diet that's in variety and good quality whole real foods, okay? Staying hydrated as much as you possibly can, drinking a lot of water, focus on how you are eating. That is really important. So like, are you chewing your food all the way? Are you just scarfing your shit down? That's not going to be good for you. Um, fasting is also a really good point to bring up here. If you are dealing with gut issues, not the best idea to fast. Hormonal issues, not the best issue to fast. I know intermittent fasting is huge for weight loss, but if you are dealing with digestive issues, fasting is not going to be your best bet when it's like a long period of time. Really, when you're dealing with gut issues, you want to focus on having smaller meals that your body is able to like digest and absorb fully before placing another meal onto it. So if you're eating like a six or 700 calorie meal, 800,000 calorie meal, your body has not fully digested and absorbed it by the time that the next time you're going in and eating another really large meal like that, just a couple of hours later. So you need to give your body time to digest and absorb the food. And again, if you're able to eat foods that are high in fiber and protein, right, you want to look at your plate. You want to eat your protein first and your fiber, and then you want to eat the carb to kind of slow down that insulin spike. So that's going to help you support your digestive capacity. Um, training wise, we can't be training super heavy while we're trying to fix your gut health. So anything that is like rest periods that are super short, stuff back to back, like anything that's causing stress, that needs to be changes. Again, prioritizing stress reduction is so, so big when you are dealing with your stress. Reducing your toxins in your environment and your body, um, that's also a really big thing. I have a whole bunch of resources on toxins. Um, consider taking supplements, obviously, as needed, and then only taking antibiotics when needed. Don't just take a Band-Aid approach to everything. Let's try to figure out the deeper cause. And then again, we can always test if continued. So optimizing your diet for gut health. So fats, are great for your hormonal health, your gut health. I cannot emphasize this enough. I know in the diet culture, people pull out fats immediately because they're so high in calories, but it is really important that we optimize it for your gut health. So limiting processed vegetable oils um, and having more omega-3s is gonna be helpful for you. MCT oil, um, as needed based on your GI distress. And then having more whole natural oils um, and nuts and seeds is gonna be a great source for you to get your fats in. Now, carbohydrates, you're gonna wanna swap your sources based on what you need and the timing in and out of like what phase you're in or if you're in a prep, those types of things. Utilizing complex and fibrous carbs as tolerated is gonna be really good for you. Prioritize diversity in fruits and vegetables and obviously like resistance to starch. So those are gonna be how you're gonna to wanna to do it with your carbs. Protein, protein diversity, very, very important. Do not eat the same exact thing six times a day. Do not do that. Incorporate plant and animal sources. Increase your hydration with poor um, protein intake and then like whey versus casein. So whey is going to be faster digesting protein and then casein is going to be slower digesting uh, protein. So again, make sure that you are using what your body likes and what it is needed. So casein, typically people will have like before bed to kind of space out their protein intake to have it overnight versus whey is like your normal everyday protein powder that you would have. Um, optimizing your diet for gut health. So here are probiotic rich foods, um, yogurt, kefir, buttermilk, aged cheese, sauerkraut, kimchi, meat, miso, tempeh, um, pickles, kombucha, fermented vegetables, you know, sourdough, um, apple cider vinegar with the mother. If you're having gut issues, I definitely recommend those. And then here's some probiotic foods as well. Again, you're going to see a lot of the foods that we've talked about. So vegetables, um, fruits, and then just other sources of ways to kind of get in more. So optimizing your diet, you're going to want to think anti-inflammatory or Mediterranean diet. Obviously, we would have prescribed you one of these diets if you are a client with us to figure out, you know, what's going on, pre and probiotic rich foods. You're going to always want to make sure that you are eating the rainbow and you're limiting any like artificial sweeteners, emulsifiers, and preservatives all over. Um, Pre-exercise meal planning. So this really depends on when you are training, but digestion basically 
pulls blood flow to the organs. So if you want blood flow to your muscles during the training, right, that's a really good thing. So two hours plus your full meal is allowed. You can prioritize, you know, slow digesting carbs, digestible vegetable with a protein. Again, that's going to help you optimize your glucose transporters. Or if it's one hour or less, you're going to want to eat a faster digesting carb and limit the value of vegetables with that protein. Um, if you are you know, an advanced athlete and you're taking intra, that's another thing we could talk about. And then even limiting liquids with your meals. So specific lifestyle work. Fasting at least 12 hours if possible. So you eat your last meal at 7 p.m., you eat your next meal at 7 a.m. overnight. That type of fasting is great. It's awesome. Again, you're not pounding on more food, more food, more food while that other food isn't digested and absorbed in your stomach. Deep belly breathing um, is really great. Going for walks after your meals and then feeding your gut and helping you feed your mind. Um, the endocrine disrupting chemicals, <laughs> those have to go. So there is a 5R gut healing protocol. We have probably already talked about this or kind of moved you through it or we're kind of helping you out with this. But basically, it's remove, replace first, um, re-inoculate, repair, and then rebalance. That's kind of what we want to do. So we want to remove the foods that you've been reacting to, the pathogens, you know, the bacteria, the yeast, the parasites, the viruses, microbiome, toxins, review your medications. We want to do all of that first. Then we want to replace. So anything that's like low stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile in order to optimize your digestion and its absorption. Um, we might even do stool testing with you at this phase. Three is we want to reestablish a healthy balance of microflora using probiotics, prebiotics, fermented foods, fiber, and supplements. Then we want to repair it. Um, again, repairing your gut lining, different nutrients in your food, such as like a glutamine, zinc, herbs, you know, those types of things. And then finally, we're going to rebalance. We're going to address your body, your whole health, your factors like your sleep and your stress and your fasting, your medication and your movement to prevent this from happening over and over and over again. So GI testing for issues, um, GI map or GI effects, right? We want to make sure that we're not having any issues with pathogens or overgrowth or yeast or parasites. We might even look in for SIBO. Uh, it all kind of depends. Um, we're going to probably talk about metal testing, toxic bucket reduction, um, medication removal, food sensitivities, crap ingredients, your habits, bad people in your life, right? We want to test for all of those different things. So Here's kind of the things that we look at. This is from a GI test. I love looking at these. These are very, very helpful. It helps us see like your overgrowth, your H. pylori, your parasites, your fungi, your yeast, all those different types of things. It does all show up. And then eventually we just replace. So we'll go over the stomach acid test. Some people handle betanine better than apple cider vinegar. It just kind of depends. Um, we'll talk about like the pancreatic enzyme trial. We might use digestive betters, bile support, or then we are analyzing you here for better testing and your exact needs. After that, again, we're going to add in those probiotics, those prebiotics as needed. If we add these in too soon, it can make things worse. A lot of our clients do really like fiber products because, again, these are both preventative and supportive. So we do like those. And then again, we go into that repair and rebalance phase, stress management, um, glutamine, you know, all of the different types of things, NAC, um, EFAs, and carnosone, bone broth, aloe, carming herbs, like all of those different types of things. This is key to healing your gut issues long term. You Again, you have to change your exercise and your training. There's no way around it. Okay. I hope this video is helpful, gives you a little bit of an overview of what is going on, what we're doing along this gut journey. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and we'll chat with you soon. Bye.